Hey everyone, so this is a follow-up or a part two, maybe, to my last video where I spoke about the dream that God gave me, where I saw the bread of Christ and uh, how that relates to us in this present day, how that relates to us preparing for Jesus' return, how do we get ourselves ready and how do we get others ready. But in this video, I want to speak a bit more about what it means to be the Bride of Christ and how do we prepare exactly in knowing what the Bride of Christ means. So I want to start with Matthew chapter 24, which I mentioned in the previous video. And again, if you did not watch the last video, please go back and watch it because I will be making several references to that previous video. And I don't want anybody confused like, what is she talking about? So go back and watch the video. Right, <laughs> so Matthew chapter 24, let's look at verse 44 um, to verse 51. Therefore, you also be ready. For the Son of Man is coming at an hour that you do not expect. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour that he is not aware of and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And chapter 25, which you could read in your spare time, as usual, I will put all the scriptures mentioned in the description box. Chapter 25, um, verses 1 to 13, it speaks about the wise and foolish visions, which I did mention in the previous video. So again, you need to go watch the previous video. Um, but yeah, the wise and foolish visions, you know, the foolish ones, they let the oil in their lamps run out. So when the wedding began, they were unprepared. They were not ready. So let's start with some basic definitions. What does it mean to be the bride of Christ? When we say the bride of Christ, what or whom exactly are we referring to? So the bride of Christ basically refers to his church, his people, the body of Christ, those whom he died for, those whom he gave himself as a ransom for. That is the bride of Christ. So the first and foremost priority of every single person on the face of this earth is to know if they are a part of the bride or not is to know if they have been saved or not is to know if they have accepted jesus and come into the fold of new life of being a new creation in christ that is a very important thing to be sure of so if you're not sure of that then i urge you to take some time and check that over and be sure of where you are what side you're on because in this video i'm going to be talking to the church to the bride of christ so if you're not sure if you belong to that group, then I, I suggest you you sort it out um, for, for, your, for your own benefit. And um, what does that mean? The bride of Christ, we are in the same way an analogy of an earthly bride. So in the same way that an earthly bride will care for her husband, submit to her husband, serve her husband, she will always have her husband's best interests in her. She will always follow the leading of her husband. That is the relationship that we ought to have with Christ. And many of us believers, we don't like to let Jesus lead our lives. We we sing these songs and, oh, Jesus, take the wheel. And, uh, Lord, I offer my life to you, Jesus, bring new wine out of me. But when God actually starts to, to lead your life, when God actually starts to to call you to submit to him on a deeper level we don't like it at all uh because we we like to be in control we like to chart our own paths we like to have the final say in everything but that is not a characteristic of the bride of christ uh we can never have our own interests at heart we can never have our own interests as being a priority over god's work over what god wants in our lives so we are called to serve the bridegroom we are called to submit we are called to be humble. Now, pridefulness is not a characteristic of the bride. And there was a group of people in my dream that I'm going to speak about in relation to pridefulness. Now, there was a group of people who they were ready for the wedding and they were sitting um, all polished up and stuff. But they were not concerned about what was going on around them. They were 
pious they were ignorant they had no empathy they had no love for other people around them who may have not been ready or who may be perishing and going to hell they didn't care uh they were just content that they were okay they were saved they're happy and they're sitting there and they you know to hell with everybody else that was the sort of behavior that they had going on and uh, the lord showed me that there are many people like that in the church today they are concerned with their own salvation and they are overly religious and they could care less about bringing people into the fold you know in the bible jesus lamented and he said that the harvest is plentiful there are so many people out there who want to hear about christ there are so many people out there who want to give their lives to god but god can't use you to minister to them because you're selfish or you're ignorant or you have a bad attitude or you could care less so there are people out there who want to know about christ but they're not going to hear about him from you because you're pious and you're sitting in your own pool of self-righteousness and you're not even being careful of the fact that you could drown and uh, that is not a characteristic of the bride of christ but sadly there are many of us who sometimes we we act that way we, we lack empathy we lack love and uh, we have to remember that the main characteristic of being a follower of christ the main characteristic of being a child of god is our love Jesus said, by your love, they will know that you are my disciples, not by how fancy you pray, not by how much Bible verses are in your bio, not by if you could speak in tongues or if you could sing really well. That is not the mark of a believer. The mark of a believer is love. And many of us are lacking love and we are claiming to be Christians. We are claiming to be the bride of Christ. We are claiming to be a part of his church, but we don't love anyone but ourselves. And that is very, very bad. That is not how the bride operates. And uh, we have to be anxiously waiting on his return. Yes, but while we are waiting on his return, we are busying ourselves and we are getting ourselves ready and we are getting others ready as well. Now, back to the analogy of an earthly bride and her husband. When the wife is waiting at home, waiting for her husband to return from work, she's not just sitting idly by or she's not only taking care of herself, she's taking care of the kids feeding the kids she may be cleaning she may be cooking she's busying herself around the house and she's anxiously waiting his return to spend time with him to talk with him etc etc and so too we are supposed to be busy we are supposed to be serving in god's kingdom we are supposed to be loving our neighbors we are supposed to be witnessing to people when we get the opportunity to do so and witnessing doesn't necessarily mean that you get on youtube and you make a video like me or you go in the streets with a placard and a sign saying repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand there there are many many ways that you can be a witness sometimes being a kind and compassionate person is witnessing because that person sees the love of christ through you sometimes sending a bible verse to a friend who you know is going through something difficult that is witnessing in and of itself you know every little thing that we do to glorify christ he notices you know, so it's not that there's anything too big or too small. Or, oh, I can't do this. You know, um, I'm I'm not a preacher. I can't do that. Like, that has nothing to do with it. That has nothing to do with it. We are all called to serve God in different ways. And there are little ways of doing things. But each and every single thing has an important impact. Because each and every single thing that we do for Christ, it plants a seed. So we're not supposed to take that for granted. We're not supposed to be like, oh, well doesn't matter what i do you know there are other people doing this no every single one of us we are called as his bride to bring other people into the fold to invite other people to the wedding you know we're not just supposed to sit down there and well oh well i saved if they don't see about their salvation that's them that has nothing to do with me no that is not the attitude we are supposed to have jesus was in the highways and the byways he was with the tax collectors and the prostitutes not sinning with them but reaching them witnessing to them could you imagine what little impact Jesus' ministry would have had if he had only decided to sit with the so-called righteous people? If he had only decided to sit in the higher areas of society and with the readers and the teachers of the law, how much people would he have reached? How much people would he have been able to impact? Would Zacchaeus have turned from his wicked ways, from his um evil 
money laundering, tax collecting. He used to exploit the people for money. But he have turned from his wicked ways if Jesus had not met with him. But um, the woman caught in the act of adultery, would she have repented if she had not had an encounter with Christ? So we have to remember that the people that God has called us to reach, the people that God has called us to minister to, sometimes they're going to be in places that we don't want to go. Sometimes it can be your co-worker at your office who you do not like, who tends to irk you and itch you and rub you in all the wrong ways. Sometimes it's going to be that one classmate that you find annoying. But it doesn't matter if you find them annoying or not because Jesus loves them and Jesus died for them. And as his bride, you have a duty to tell others about him so that they too can get ready for the wedding. So we are to be preparing at all times, tidying our houses, telling others to get ready for the wedding. We are supposed to live like Jesus died yesterday, like he rose today, and like he's coming back tomorrow. That is a quote. I think it's by Body Bookham. I will check it out when I'll put like the actual quote from the person and give them their credits in the description box because I don't want to get like striked down for copyright or anything. I don't know if that's how it is, but <laughs> we are to live like Jesus died yesterday, like he rose today, and like he's coming back tomorrow. So... I think I can end the video here, but basically, I want you all to remember the characteristics of the Bride of Christ. How does the Bride operate? The Bride is humble, the Bride is full of servitude, the Bride is seeking always to glorify the Bridegroom. The Bride is full of love, not seeking the interests of herself, but seeking to help others, to help them to know Christ and to help make Christ known in the earth. The Bride is always busy, always preparing herself always tidying up, always seeing to others, and always anxiously waiting on the bridegroom's return. So that is all for this video. Um, do watch the previous video where I spoke about the dream in length. Thank you so much for tuning in again. And all these scriptures will be posted in the description box. And just please reflect on this and make sure that you are employing all the characteristics that represent the bride of Christ so that when the wedding happens, you can be like the faithful servants. You can be like the wise virgins who had their lamps burning brightly, awaiting the marriage feast. Thank you. Bye. God bless. I love you as usual. And God loves you even more.